Hi, I'm Dr. Bertice Berry, and I'm going to read with you a story, one that I wrote. They say that a tree never dies, that we pass our life on to the root system, allowing the trees, plants, shrubs, and grass to live on and on forever. Which, by the way, is why you should never try to separate the wheat from the chaff. Everything is connected. But that's another story for another time. I am the mighty dogwood tree, but most folks didn't know of me before it happened. I grew up in Jerusalem. I was tall and thick like the trees you call oak. They say a tree never dies, but I did that day. The trees in my village had been used to crucify people before, but not one of them deserved this kind of death not even the guilty. We all heard of these crucifixions through the rustling of the leaves, down through time and time again. We lived long, so we remembered. Phoenicians, Pharisees, and Assyrians all used our tree bodies to bring about what they called justice. But where is the justice? What had any of us done? Those tribes were harsh, and now they were lost, but the Romans, they were a breed unto their own selves. Well, they'd cut me down before my time, before I had a chance to leave my spirit with the others. I was the tallest and mightiest in our forest. My strength would have housed many. But listen to me when I tell you this. There is a death and a final death. And because I had not willingly given up the ghost, I was not dead dead. They hauled me down and dragged me to the center of a city where they cut me into, forming the shape of surrender. That's when I saw him. I immediately knew who he was. I lived in the wilderness with John the baptizer, so I'd heard tell of him before and after his birth. Those who provided shade to the wise men on their journey spoke of a baby born to a poor young girl and her new husband, Joseph and Mary were their names. The trees that stood outside of the temple where he was first presented sent word of the marvels of this young boy. Whole forests shook with each and every healing, every blessing, every restoration. We sent leaves and blossoms along the path where he walked and every time I hear that song, were you there when they crucified my Lord, I cry out in the pain of it all. Yes, 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 I was there. They chopped me down and shaved my skin before they cut me in the two heavy blocks that would form the cross. All the while, I cried, not for myself. I cried for the innocence of the one who would die with me. When they strapped me to his back and made him carry me through the streets, I wailed not because I knew the weight of his that he carried. Who can devise a death like this, so cruel, so brutal, and why? I cried to no one, because only he could hear me, for he was there when I was made. Oh, but what they did to them, what they did to him. Jesus of Nazareth, the Savior, Redeemer, Healer, Teacher, I could not assist or help carry his load. I was the load. I saw the angry mob and recognized the faces of those who had cried Hosanna, Hosanna just the week before. I thought of what John had called them so many years ago and I thought it fitting. Only a brood of vipers could cheer on something like this. I was there when the iron nails were driven into his hands and feet. I was there when they pierced him in the side and I saw his mother and the other Mary as they cried. And I was there when he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And I was the witness to the silence that came in return. Then he gave up the ghost. They took him away, laid him in a tomb, but I was still there crying when he rose again. And I know that the savior lives if you ever see a dogwood tree, you'll see my truth as well. The tree is short and gnarled, which some say is a curse. 
But as for me and mine, we know this to be a blessing because you can never ever use us that way again. Now, every year around Easter time, my descendants bear blossoms that grow in the shape of a cross. If you look closely, you'll see the tiny drops of blood. I love you.